Hello and welcome to the Grand Line Review, your source for everything One Piece. Today we are going to be taking a look at a very neglected aspect of the series in the form of entrepreneurs. Now given that One Piece is a battle manga, it's no surprise that most people focus on things like which character is stronger or what fight was better. And I mean, that's fine. That's generally what Shonen Manga boils down to in the end anyway. However, the world of One Piece is quite unique and there is certainly more than one way to make a mark in this world. And one of those methods is by venturing into the domain of business. To be clear, an entrepreneur is an individual who starts their own business, often at significant financial risk, in the hopes of being wildly successful and making all of the money in the universe. Although that, that second part doesn't necessarily have to be true, and the world of One Piece has seen an astonishing amount of these individuals on almost every single location we visit in the world, and it is time to give them their recognition. So the criteria for this list is as follows. I will only be looking at individual characters rather than groups of people. And as always, every character on this list must be canon, because I don't need a reason. But with that out of the way, let's begin. Welcome to the top five entrepreneurs in One Piece. Number five, Shaki. Kicking things off today, we have the seemingly age immune partner of Silver's Rayleigh, Shaki. Once a fairly notorious pirate, this lady gave up her pillaging ways to start a bar on Sabadi Archipelago. Its name is Shaki's Ripoff Bar. Very apt, as all the prices she charges for even the smallest of items are exorbitant to say the least. In fact, she once told Chopper that the price of cotton candy he had consumed in her bar was 100,000 berries. And although she was only teasing him, this isn't all that far from the truth. And although she was only teasing him, this isn't all too far from the truth. Now you won't believe this, but Shaki's Ripoff Bar doesn't receive many customers. Customers, which one would think isn't great for business, and yeah, it isn't. However, due to the extremely high prices she is able to con out of the occasional customer, it must be enough to continue operations at the very least. Her bar is also notorious for beating up customers who refuse to pay, presumably owing to the strength Shaki acquired during her years as a pirate. However, the best business decision Shaki made was to set the bar up in Grove 13 of the archipelago, which is smack bang in the middle of a lawless zone, allowing her to operate this ever so shady business. And you know, she may not make the most money in the the world, but Shaki certainly does serve as a great opening example of a successful entrepreneur. Number 4. Zeph. Here we have another ex-pirate who, after being shipwrecked and forced to consume his own leg, decided that he was going to pursue a dream of opening up a floating restaurant which would become known as Baratier. As an accomplished chef, Zef had complete faith in his ability to construct and provide a menu of phenomenal food, but he was also a man with a true vision in regards to the atmospheric presentation of his business, which is stunning inside and out. However, Zef also had the foresight to hire and reform outcasts of society, primarily from the world of piracy, like him. As a result, he was able to develop integral bonds of loyalty with his employees, as well as construct a natural army of chefs who are entirely capable of defending the floating restaurant from any attackers, which are fairly common in a world full of pirates. And despite all of that, Baratier has built itself a reputation of true gourmet dining with individuals from all over East Blue and beyond making the trek just to sample the offerings at the restaurant. This success has also led to the expansion of Baratier and it has now developed a further two dining vessels, the Teppanyaki ship, Nasukasira, and the submarine dessert ship, Sister Anko. And all of this has simply sprung from the mind of one very driven pirate, a true entrepreneur. Number three, Papug. Perhaps better known as Kami's pet starfish, Papug actually got his start in the workforce by assisting Hachi with his takoyaki restaurant. However, Papug also had his own dreams of becoming a fashion designer, and he would go on to create a brand known as Criminal. Exactly when it was founded is up for debate, as the logo has been seen on characters pre-time skip. However, it would appear to have made its meteoric rise to popularity during the two-year time skip. As a result, we were introduced to a very wealthy and famous Papug during the Fishman Island arc, who lived in a mansion in the very flashy area of Giovoli hills. And honestly, it's not too hard to see why. The criminal brand, often displayed as Crimin, is a nice simple logo that can be applied to a wide array of otherwise plain clothing, which is a tried and tested strategy of fashion, offering relatively bland clothing so as to appeal to as many people as possible, but slapping a brand over the top, thus giving them the right to charge far more for a regular shirt than any non-branded outlet. Genius, really, and something this starfish took wonderful advantage of. Although if I had to criticize Papug in any way, it would certainly be when he offered the straw hats any items from one of his stores for free, which uh, promptly resulted in the place being entirely cleaned out. And while not enough to sink the business, this surely would have been a very costly mistake. With that said, it's very difficult to argue that a starfish who owns his own mansion can be considered anything less than a wildly successful entrepreneur. 
Number two, Wapol. I never thought I'd see the day where Wapol would end up this high on another list, but here we are. After his fall from grace in the Drum Island Dark, Wapol became very desperate to the point where he began consuming garbage. And thanks to his devil fruit, the Baku Baku no Mi, he inadvertently started creating a series of toys. These toys soon attracted the attention of children, which prompted Wapol to set up a shop, and bam, he was in business. And things further exploded from there when scientists discovered a secret within these toys, a new metal conjured as a result of Wapol's devil fruit, which was creatively named Wapo Metal. And from there, Wapol simply could not stop the money from coming in. Wapo became so rich that he was actually able to start an entirely new country known as the Black Drum Kingdom, as well as marry a stunning lady named Kinderella, also known as Miss Universe. In fact, Wapo's status now is exceptionally higher than when he was King of Drum, proving that with some hard work, a good idea, and a bit of luck, uh, in this case a lot of luck, you can go everywhere in this world. Wapo practically serves as the definition of entrepreneur, and yet there is still one figure that we need to examine. Number one. Iceberg. Moving on, we have a student of the legendary shipwright Tom, who was directly responsible for uniting the various shipyards of Water 7 into one Goliath company known as Galila. This company is one of, if not the most prominent shipbuilding organizations in the One Piece world today, and employs only the most skilled of carpenters to service their clientele, which consists of pirates, the world government, and even general citizens. Essentially, if you need a ship, there is no better place to be. Under the direction of the company president Iceberg, the success of Galila has led to rapid economic growth for the entire island of Water 7, and furthermore led to Iceberg being elected as the mayor of the nation. And this truly is an entrepreneurial endeavor, as Iceberg now looks beyond operating a simple company, and is instead invested in the prosperity of an entire civilization through the key trade of shipbuilding. Iceberg's interests also lie in the area of innovation, and the Galila company have since expanded into the industry of building sea trains, having successfully completed the puffing ice following the two-year time skip, the use of which will significantly increase their ability to trade with other nations at great speeds. All in all, Iceberg is a man who is directly responsible for the rise of an entire island. He has gone beyond the territory of a simple businessman and ascended into the true realm of entrepreneurship. And that pretty much does it for the top five entrepreneurs in One Piece. If you enjoyed this video, then feel free to like, favorite, or subscribe. And if you are in any way inclined to support this independent channel, then please feel free to check out my Patreon, Discord server, or Twitter, the links to which are in the handy description below. Finally, please do comment with your own favorite entrepreneurs in the series. This has been the Grand Line Review, and I'll see you next time.